Hello boys and girls, this is Miss Burkholtz here from her home in Murfreesboro. Um, today we are going to be drawing the rhino. Um, the rhino is definitely on the top 50 endangered species list. It's a little more difficult to draw, but it's a great example of some texture and value. So I thought it would be good for us to draw that today. Um, go ahead and get a sheet of paper, a pencil, an eraser. And come on back while you're doing that I'm gonna go ahead and get my Bob Ross quote going this one says look around look at what we have beauty is everywhere you only have to look to see it oh and I love that how perfect is that for Earth Day week beauty really is everywhere across the earth right y'all got your pencils you got your sheet of paper which direction is my paper going that's right horizontal this is a little bit more difficult as far as getting the basic shapes done, but the shading is pretty simple. Um, and we will do that as best we can, step by step. All right, here we go. My paper is sideways. And a little bit off to the side, towards the top, I'm gonna draw an oval with a slight squished out part right here, okay? Um, just a little bit lower and further down, we're going to do what kind of looks like a rounded teardrop shape. This is the rhino's mouth and head and his rear. <laughs> um, we're going to draw just a general oval for ear number one and another oval for ear number two. This one's going back a little bit. Notice I'm not pressing down hard at all because these are just basic sketches to help us know where things are going to be. Two little ovals burp, burp, right here. This is where our um, horns are going to be located. Okay, y'all got it. Again, if I go too quickly for you, please feel free to pause, come on back whenever you're ready, or if I go too slow, go ahead and fast forward. All right, now from here, I'm going to do a bump and another bump up and back. Okay. This shows his back going back into the body. Right here, I'm gonna draw a little bit harder line for the chin. And I'm gonna start drawing a point coming out from this first horn, and then a longer one right here. You can kind of play around with your shapes. Like right here, I noticed, uh-oh, made the mouth a little bit too short, so I'm gonna go ahead do a line going this way to make it about the right size. All right, so for ear number one, right over here, I'm gonna make it come to a point and then curve back down, a little line to mimic that. And before I get too confused or go off too much with all the extra details, I'm gonna go ahead and erase a few of my sketch marks so I don't get lost with the excess of lines. All right, I'm gonna do a bump because they do have lots of bumps on their bodies. They have a bump right here on their head and then my other ear is gonna also come to a point like that. So already, even if you mess up anything else, this looks like some kind of rhino, right? Y'all see it? I sure hope so. All right, right here about where the chinny chin chin is, we're gonna go ahead and do a wobble line going back and we're going to start with our legs. So right here, we're going to do an oval. And this is a larger oval, but it's going to go flat right here. More like a tab for that part of our oval. Y'all got it? Hanging in? Hope so. All right, next. Dun, 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 dun we are going to go ahead and draw our actual legs. So I'm gonna draw two little lines going down from this oval for this first leg. I'm just gonna draw a sideways oval for foot number one. And right over here, I'm gonna draw a line going down and in, down and in, and then another wide oval for foot number two. Now you wanna make sure that these two are pretty close together and they're about the same length because you don't want your back leg like wicked short or wicked long. That would be a problem. All right, from this back leg, way, way back over here, it's gonna have two lines going down and in, but they're coming 
at an angle a little bit. I'm gonna make this rear a little bigger here. There we go. And I'm gonna draw another oval, making sure that this one is very similar. And if, if you have trouble lining them up, you can just draw a little line to make sure they generally all touch the line so we don't have any floating legs. And I'm gonna start working on the back foot or the foot on the other side. Little line, slight angle down, or in, down, and then a curve here. There we go. So we've got the basic structure of our whole rhino going on. All right, now I'm gonna start adding in the little toes, which are just these little curves that go the middle. Think of it as a very wide U in the middle of each of your feet, at least in the front two. And then the back, I'm going to do the U a little bit closer to the front, and another curve here. So we have more flexible toes than an elephant, but their body structure is very similar to an elephant. They both have the big bumpy back, both very thick leathery skin, um, wide belly, and unfortunately, both of these animals are, in fact, endangered. All right, so I'm going to erase out my back part right here. I don't need my oval anymore. Thankfully, all of my guidelines are done. Got most of my structure all set to go. Yay! We have a rhino! What, what? All right. Now for all the fun details. The details are always my favorite part next to shading. I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple of folds and wrinkles that you find on most rhinos. So they have this big fold on top of this foot. The belly's kind of overlapping that back leg there. They have big bellies. And maybe a couple extra folds right here. A little bit of texture around where the ears are. Yeah. And I'm going to draw a small eye. Their eyes are pretty small. He's just kind of looking down, chilling out. Teeny tiny nose right there, a little nostril. Uh-oh, my pencil broke. Oh, no. Let's see if I got another one here. There we go. And if you hear a sound in the background, that is my cat playing with their, her toy over there in the living room here. All right, guys, you feel like you've gotten enough wrinkles going on? You can always add more if you'd like. But now that I think I got most of the basic details done, I'm going to do some black toenails. And my favorite part shading all right shading is not just adding um darks wherever you feel like it i mean we all know rhino is basically gray so shading of course it is going to be mostly gray but um you are going to be thinking about where the lights and darks would be so the sun comes from the top right so it's not going to come up from the grass so this the lightest part of your rhino is going to be towards the top of where the rhino would be hit with the light. The darkest parts are going to be right on the belly here and these back legs in the underside of the neck and head. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt my pencil sideways and start shading it in. And I like to start with the darkest parts and slowly work up to lighter. I'm going to have to sharpen my pencil here best to have a good sharp pencil for shading um, that way you can tilt your pencil sideways and make it a little bit smoother because unlike the dog that we did you're going to want a slightly smoother blend there we go okay so tilting my pencil sideways i'm going to go ahead and keep all of my lines going in generally the same direction pressing down where it's going to be darker. It's definitely going to be darker on this side where this foot is. And I'm making everything darker on the outer edge of each shape. So the outside of 
the head and the jaw is going to be darker. Get lighter as we get up towards the top. Same with the ears. And I'm going to spend probably the next five to ten minutes just shading, just having fun with it. So feel free to fast forward this part or follow along. It's up to you. Again, if you show off your lines a little bit too much, you can take your finger and blend it. You can always erase out very lightly. You want to just ease that up to a little bit lighter. <clears throat> right underneath my run out, I am going to do some shading. This is called a cast shadow. It's the shadow that happens underneath or beside anything that has the sunlight on it or light on it in any way. And this just helps it look like it's actually part of the world, not just floating on my paper. I like to do little grass by teeny tiny little hatch marks going up curving them just a little bit to make them look organic or like they're from real life. And that's about it. The rest of my picture is going to be me just kind of pecking at it, adding little fun details, and getting really into drawing this. So I'm going to let you guys go and finish off your own rhino drawings. I would love to see um, what your artwork looks like, what y'all have been up to. If you have um, another endangered animal that you want to draw, go ahead and email me or send me a class dojo message and I'd be happy to try to make a video on that. Um, in the meantime, don't forget to be awesome. I love you guys and goodbye. <laughs>